Greetings, friends. I hope you are having a victorious and triumphant 2022 in this early stages of this year. Uh, today, I wanted to quickly discuss my thoughts on simulation theory, which I've been thinking about for the last uh, couple days, thinking about them quite a bit. Um, I have a more elaborate mental exercise I've been going through, but I'll get into that later. Uh, suffice it to say, in the process of this mental exercise, I've been thinking a lot about simulation theory and about my uh, my problem with simulation theory. Um, it really should be called simulation hypothesis, I think, but whatever. <laughs> um, so before I go on, though, let me say that uh, I actually uh, like the idea. I don't know if I'd say like I agree with it because I don't even know what that means. How can you agree with something that you can't possibly see evidence of? But it makes sense to me that. Um, the underlying structure of our reality would be based on uh, like numerical code, um, you know, binary code, just like computers, right? And so, in that aspect, uh, simulation theory, I I enjoy it. I, when I when I look around me and I try to think of things, I try to understand reality and I try to apply certain mental exercises. It helps for me to think of reality around me as like while loops and for loops, and you know all of these um, just these little scripts running all the place um, it makes sense to me <clears throat> but my issue my problem with simulation theory um, is that it's like okay so we live in a simulation so what it doesn't actually answer anything it's great brain candy don't get me wrong I love thinking about it and I think about it often probably more than any, any sane person should. I think about it quite often, and I think about it positively, and I enjoy it. I think it adds a, a window into understanding how this strange reality around us might work. But the thing is, ultimately, it doesn't actually lead anywhere, and a lot of the proponents of simulation theory, which I don't understand why it's not called simulation hypothesis, but anyway, um, a lot of the proponents of it uh, will talk about it as though it's like, that's the end. Like, yeah, we live in a simulation, that's it, boom, boom. And, you know, most of these people, when they say it, they're thinking of it in terms of, you know, if they had a computer on their desk and they ran a simulation. But that is irrational and illogical for two reasons. Number one, we would have, even if we are living in a simulation, we would have no idea the scale of the technology and the complexity of that tech of those of the computer that we are living inside and number two we have no idea about the person who made this who programmed the simulation who built the simulation person or computer or whatever it was we don't know either of these things and so ultimately you can talk about simulation theory but it basically explains nothing like we're still right back to where we began it still asks the question well who wrote the simulation which is no different from asking was there a god it's the same freaking thing man it's the same thing. And um, it doesn't even answer any of the more com like um, complex theological questions. As, as a matter of fact, it really only adds confusion. Um, although it's beautiful and fun and terrific confusion. Um, by which I mean, like, well, who's to say that the, f the rules of the simulation aren't so flexible that they can be radically changed? And, you know, and so maybe the whole Christian story, maybe that literally happened. It was just, it was programmed into that reality and the rules of reality were different, you know? Um, and I'm just using that as, as an example. I'm saying like any of these spiritual religious worldviews, like it doesn't answer whether or not any of them are real or any, any of them are right. Um, it doesn't even answer the question about mortality because Who's to say that the person who programmed the simulation, who's to say that they don't store deleted characters and then, you know, um, refurbish them for new characters that have the same basic underlying code but have some new things thrown on top for their new time? The reincarnation, dude. Or, um, or maybe the person has a separate um, partition where they send deleted characters to live in this new place called heaven i mean who knows man like it it answers nothing without knowing the nature of the person programming it and the nature of the technology behind a simulation theory answers nothing um and it may even raise more questions um 
No, not really, though, because we're still the fundamental question is we're ch- still trying to understand consciousness. We're still trying to understand the fabric of reality itself. All of these things, none of them change with simulation theory. None. This is not. I love simulation theory. I, like I said, I play. I play it with my in my mind all the time. Um, one of my buddies is a big simulation theory guy, and I really like talking with him about it. All I'm saying is that I feel like it's used as a crutch, and it's it's particularly used by people. Where I think where it instinctively bothers me the most um, is that it's frequently used by um, atheist-minded people, and I have no freaking problem with atheism. I have no problem with any belief system. I and mean, that's not what I do have a problem with, though, is people who um, try to act with certainty about things we can't possibly be certain about, including the origins of life, the creation of the universe. And if you are a fanatic atheist, I find you just as ridiculous as a you know, fanatic um, theist. <clears throat> I look at you exactly the same camps. Um, it's just ego run wild. <clears throat> and there's no real love of truth. And there's no real uh, quest for understanding. There's just a desire to impose your ego. But anyway, when we're talking about... Um, the way that simulation and theory is often used is it's often used by people who have this nihilistic, bleak kind of worldview where like nothing matters, there is no soul, human beings are just expendable, detritus, like whatever, all this stuff, you know. And simulation theory is often used to validate that in a, in what seems to be, on the surface, what sounds to be a rational claim, right? Because somebody can say, well, I think we're just living in a computer simulation, it's all meaningless. But living in a computer simulation and meaninglessness are mutually exclusive. They're not the same thing. They could be the same thing. But that would all depend on the nature of the computer in which the simulation is being run. Um, And it even goes further than that, because then it would also depend on the nature of the universe in which the simulation computer exists, right? Because we don't even know what that reality would be. So... um, my problem with simulation theory is not the idea itself. The idea itself I actually find very fascinating. Um, my problem primarily is how it's used. People jump to conclusions about what it would actually mean if we are living in a simulation. And for those of you who come across it and uh, maybe you're like me, you really do not like the idea that the people that you love and your, your friends and your family that they are just meaningless and that one day they're going to disappear and die. You don't, you don't like that. Whether it be you don't like it emotionally, you don't like it intellectually, or you just don't like it as a holistic thing. Um, either way, when you hear them say that, just stop to think for a minute because nothing they're saying actually proves that life is meaningless at all. Um, nothing that they say really disproves anything. It just adds another layer to the mystery, and it adds a useful way for us to conceptualize how reality might be built around us, right? Like, like how, what the mechanics are of this universe, of this reality. I I feel like it does help understand that, um, but that doesn't help understand the causes. It doesn't help understand the purposes. It doesn't help understand the direction. None of those things. And any claims to the contrary are they're flat out wrong they're irrational and illogical if anybody can counter that then you know drop a comment we'll talk about it um but i've thought this through quite a bit and i don't see how simulation theory tells us much of anything and especially not that life is meaningless and hollow and nihilistic and you know there are some no uh, universal love out there or whatever there's none none of that is inherent in the idea of a simulation None. Anybody anybody can counter that? Let me know. We'll talk about it. But until then, whatever this thing is we're living in, my friends, I hope you have a splendid day. hope you have a splendid 2022. I hope you have a splendid life. Good guys are going to win. Keep up the good fight. Be confident, happy. Drive forward to your goals. And thank you very much for giving your time and watching this video. And I mean that sincerely. Goodbye, friends.